<laughs> Let's get the obvious out of the way first, shall we? The E-Type is a stunning looking machine. And yes, some rather important industry figure called Enzo Ferrari once called it the most beautiful car ever made. And who am I to argue? However, everyone raving about the way it looks slightly bothers me as the beauty is more than skin deep as far as the E-Type is concerned. This car was as cutting edge as it got when it was first introduced. It was a technological marvel with a level of sophistication that would shame some of the modern cars which are just a waste of time, air and fuel. So in this video we will try to highlight the less well-known aspects of the car through our nice chat with its owner Anthony J. Wilson. Despite a total drive of 5 hours with the open top, in freezing weather, being a true British gentleman, he did not utter a single word of complaint. On the contrary, he went to extraordinary lengths to make some of the scenes you are viewing now possible. Few people would take their SUVs through mud this thick. You can watch the footage of it at the end of the video by the way. I just cannot thank him enough. You bought the car here, right? No, I bought this car 25 years ago in, in England. I remember the first first few months I had it, one time I left it parked in central Edinburgh. Uh -huh. I went into a corner shop and uh, a guy ran into the corner shop there and was shooting me and said, is that your E-Type? <laughs> he come and look at it. <laughs> and the handbrake had failed and it had rolled really? into the middle of a very busy street. <laughs> Thank God nobody had crashed into it. I'm very grateful to all the drivers that had sort of swerved around it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just one wow. of the, the, the sort of famous little little uh, failings that these uh -huh. have, the, 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 the handbrake <laughs> can, uh, can become a bit useless. It's okay now, I think. Thank God, since we've parked it on quite a hill. Yeah. Should we put some stones under it? <laughs> well, if it starts to move, <laughs> jump into it. Yeah, and, okay. Uh, Although it featured a monocoque construction, independent rear suspension and all-round disc brakes, which were all very advanced for the 60s, it was half the price of an Aston Martin DB4, which was a lot slower, unless you were James Bond. And it was the fraction of a price of a contemporary Ferrari 250, which had a live rear axle. What is the maximum speed you have done with it? I've only done 125 miles an hour. There were lots of claims that, you know, the initial cars that have cracked the back then magical 150 miles per hour were tweaked a bit. They were not standard in terms of engine performance, etc. And most owners would struggle to reach even 140, they would say. I know. Um, I've never tried to go Uh huh. I just find it a bit scary. Yeah. Uh, even at 125. Um, so I'm not really sure what would happen. It's partly a matter of the final gearing. Yeah. This one has quite a um, uh, quite high ratio rear differential, so the engine's not actually revving very high. Uh -huh. So it should be capable of going. Yeah. I don't know, 135, 140, I suppose. The car was designed by Malcolm Sayer, who was an aircraft engineer. It's not hard to see the aircraft fuselage look in the styling of the E-Type. And Malcolm Sayer has said that uh, I'm not a stylist. Have you heard about it? I'm not a hairdresser, so don't call me a stylist, he really? used to say, yes. Oh, and he had very complex formulas. Huh? I mean, he was set to do stuff that now modern computer software does. He got these logarithm tables, etc. So 
In fact, all the curves and shapes were based on his formula. He used to draw up on the board and lots of uh, equations, numbers, figures, etc. that no one did understand to make it as, as you said, streamlined as possible. And the way they tested the car, because, you know, say using wind tunnels back then was not something daily as it was today. Uh, they would put on cotton strings to, you know, every part of the car and he would watch from a distance how they move. So he would alter the design or style accordingly. It's nice to think that, you know, it, it might be aerodynamically efficient as well as looking yeah, looking beautiful. But uh, it, in those days, they hadn't they hadn't thought yet of, of, of a sort of dam effect. Yeah, under the front, you know, the steering does go noticeably light at high speed uh -huh. because of the airflow under the car. Yeah, under the front, there, which adds yeah. to that sort of feeling yeah. of <laughs> yeah. Of, um, lack of confidence yeah. that you can get if you're, not, <laughs> if you're not very brave it's like aircraft wing so yes yes as the air flows faster on the upper side it lifts it was before colin chapman came up with ground effect cars so they didn't know Indeed much Indeed, about also another thing with the formula one cars this car is monocoque and it was one year ahead of Formula One in using monocoque. Interesting, I mean, when you read more and more this kind of stuff, you appreciate more what they have tried to achieve. Rigidity, I think, is absolutely excellent. Yeah. Uh, for such an old car. I mean, I've been driving open top cars basically, you know, all my adult life, uh, what, 40 years or so now. And uh, that's just about the best in terms of rigidity. I mean, it, it, it's quite surprisingly good. Uh -huh. um, there's a, you get a little bit of a sort of noise from uh, from the front when you go over a bump, but within the car, you don't feel any sort of uh, 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 of shaking. Yeah. Or, 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 whereas in almost all the other cars I've driven. Yeah. You should see how my Camaro drives in that sense, you know. Every part is going the other way when really? you just yeah, well, that's when you a push it. Car. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think about Eagle? Would you take your car to Eagle? I think I would. Really? <laughs> I mean, terrible thing for the originality, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. still, I mean, I have the feeling with the E-Type that, you know, it's beautiful and they nearly got it just right. Yeah. But they didn't quite get it just right. Yeah. And if Eagle can, you know, make, make it, right. it better, it might yeah. be a really good thing. I think these two companies are like head and shoulders above the others in terms of, say, restomot stuff, as they say. I guess so. And by the way, what Singer does is like they take the 964 models, you know, so it's not like, say, an old numbers matching car is being destroyed. OK, 964 is also getting more valuable by the time. It was like despised car, just like my car, but <laughs> they also, you know, they say Singer have taken so many cars out of the market, their values have gone up. <laughs> they have just finished their 100 car, by the way. Really? It's, it's an achievement for, a, you know, California. And here's some more trivia for you. Do you know the guy, the company owner? Rob Dickinson. Does Dickinson just think about it? Dickinson surname Sorry? sound familiar? Dickinson. Rob Dickinson. Dickinson. Think about another famous Dickinson. Um, 
the Sorry. Iron Maiden, Bruce Dickinson, the oh. singer. He's oh. the cousin of the singer. Mm. He used to be a singer himself. Some, yeah, really? not mm. that say, successful, I would say. And the singer name comes from the fact that he used to be a singer himself. Oh, I see. And uh, also one of the famous engineers, Porsche engineers, is Norbert Singer, ah, ah. who has oh, designed many. Yeah, yeah. The, set up yeah. the, company, but it's a bit the name comes from there. Yeah. Ah. And it has a nice smell, you know. Yeah. yeah. Better than a modern car. That's right. <laughs> all these old Jaguars, they all have a little bit the same smell. It's yeah. Strange. I think they will also start faking it in the modern cars as well faking the smells yeah no. they are faking the sounds now they you know are, they are at this stage <laughs> not in your beautiful mind yeah. they wouldn't do that <laughs> they didn't do that in your in your nano did they no but in the newer ones they have they give the sound through the speakers scandal eh? okay tony you have nice materials you can cut if you want. Let's not freeze you to death. 